this video is a follow-on video from the previous two in the playlist and I recommend if you haven't already done so that you view those two videos before viewing this video. This is the object orientated program that we considered in the previous video and you can see we have a class and within the class we have this method which is the initialization method the double underscore in its double underscore method and here we have another method called draw underscore line responsible for drawing a line between two mouse clicks. Down here you can see we're creating a window. This line will create an instance of this class passing these parameters to here and then we enter the main loop. Now when the program executes what we're going to see is the following. We're going to have a window and within the window here we have a canvas. Now let's have a look at why that is the case by looking at a runtime of this program. This is the first program statement to execute when we run this program. We then go on to this line which creates an instance of the class above. When the instance is created the first thing to execute will be this method here the underscore underscore init underscore underscore method. Now a full description of how these arguments are passed to here is outlined in the previous video so I would recommend if you're not quite sure how this bit of the code is working you do need to go back to the previous video but if I now go on to this line what we're doing we're creating an instance of the canvas class and this line is positioning that instance on the window so here we have the canvas and here we have the window and the canvas is clearly within the window this line is using the bind method and it's binding this event to this method here. Now that means that this is the event and this is the handler of the event and when we look to this string here this is what you use to say that you wish to respond to clicking on the left mouse button. This handler is the name of the method that you wish to execute and if you look at the name of the method it's here and you can see it's draw underscore line whereas if you come here you can see we have the word self in front of it. Again if you are unsure why we have the word self here you do need to go back to the previous video which described what's going on. So when we look at the first three lines of the initialization routine it's been responsible for putting this canvas onto the window and making that canvas respond to the clicking of the left mouse button and we'll see in this video what happens when you click onto the left mouse button. If you look here what's happening we're creating some variables and assigning them zero. So let's have a look at those variables schematically and you can see they are here. So this for example is this variable, this is this one and these three are these three here. And of course if you look to this program statement you can see that zero is being assigned to this and if you look at these four statements you can see zero is being assigned to each of those. So if we schematically represent that we can see that the zero is placed in each of these variables. Now these are variables that have been assigned zero in each case but you will often hear these referred to as data fields and often attributes, data attributes. And the reason for that, they're declared here as you can see within the init method but they can be used throughout the instances of this class and there's an example of one being used there, the self.x1. And of course even though this was declared here in a different method it's still available to this method here as you can see by this line of code. Once the initialization routine has executed what we're finding ourselves in now is this loop, the main loop and what's happening is the Python program is running which is this program here but it's waiting for the user of the program to do something, to fire an event. Now the event that my program is going to respond to is the left mouse click so if we consider the mouse for a moment and if I consider that the left mouse button 
click has this name in code and if I come along and click on this and I'm going to click on it in a position of the cursor on the canvas and I'm for the purposes of this video going to mark that with an X as you can see here so let's see what will happen schematically if I click on this position here where the X is marking it you'll get an event object created now this event object tells us the coordinate position of that mouse click and the event responsible for creating this event object is this one here the left mouse click and if we look at the code you can see that's what I've bound here I've bound this to this method but what will happen when we click as I've already said is this event object is generated automatically by Python and it's telling us that the X coordinate position was 30 and the Y coordinate position was 20 because of this line of code we can see that the clicking on the left mouse button is described by this string and this is the handler so Python will now know about this and it'll say right go and execute this so it'll go and execute this method here and if you look inside the method you can see there is an if else construct a selection construct now if we look here at the conditional test it's asking a question it's asking what's stored in here is it the same as zero well let's have a look and you can see here in fact it is zero so this is really asking is zero the same as zero and it is therefore this is true which means that these are the lines of code to be executed and we don't execute the code after the else therefore the next program statement to execute is this one and what it is doing, it's going to the event, the X value that was given, the X coordinate position, which we can see here is 30, because here you can see we've got event, this is the event, and we're gaining access to the X here, and you can see we're using dot notation. So this 30 is going to be given, is going to be assigned to this, self.x1. So just keep your eye on this for a moment, and you will see it's currently 0, but now it's going to be replaced by the 30, and that's the 30 that's been assigned from here to here. Of course, we're now going to go on to this program statement and what it's going to do it's going to go to the event object and it's going to gain access to y the y coordinate and if we come across here we can see that is y is assigned 20 so if you keep your eye on this it's currently zero and now that zero is going to be overwritten with the 20 as you can see there so what we've just done by clicking in this position here this event has been created and we've moved these from within the event within the event object to here by these two assignment statements now we'll come on to this line and you can see that the self dot click underscore number is assigned one come up here and you can see it's currently zero and that now will be altered to one as you can see now now for the current call of this draw underscore line method this will be the last line to execute because we've already said we have a selection construct so we won't go to the code after the else this lot so we end the draw line method we stop executing it in which case this event here which we can see was passed to this position is no longer relevant it's no longer in scope if you like so what will happen that will disappear because the events over with before I go on I would just like to point out and you might need to go back to the previous video you see this draw line method is able to receive the event because here I've got the word event saying I am going to take in the event that takes place which event well we have to come to this line and we can see that this handler which is this method is bound to this event so this method here knows it's going to receive here an event object whenever this event takes place and of course this string defines the click on the left mouse button let's now consider what happens when we click somewhere else on the canvas and let's move this mouse out of the road and let's say we're going to click in the position marked by this x here so if i go to there and i click into this position we're going to generate an event again because i've just clicked the left mouse button 
and this event is telling me where I did that clicking. I've come along the x-axis 190 and I've come down the y-axis 75. So you can see that this event has within it x being 190 which is the x coordinate position and y being 75. Now because of this line which binds this event which is clicking on the left mouse button to this handler which is this method we will go on to execute this line and what this is doing it's asking if this variable's content is the same as zero we'll have a look it's one therefore it's not the same so this is false in which case we do not execute these instead we go to the code after the else and the next program statement to execute execute is this here and we can see that self dot x2 which is this variable which currently holds zero has assigned to it this which is this object x coordinate position so that 190 will be copied to here as you can see in the schematic animation now there's the 190 going into that variable and if we carry on we'll be executing this one next now of course what this one's doing is going to the event again and it's going to gain access to the y which is this here which we can see is 75 and that 75 will be assigned to this variable here so if you keep an eye on that variable you will see that variable change from zero it'll be overwritten with the 75 as you can see now the next line to execute is this one here and if you look we're going to be invoking the create underscore line method in other words we're now going to be drawing a line on the canvas and it's going to be drawn between these coordinate positions here and here and this coordinate position has got the value of 30 as you can see here in the schematic animation and this one is this which has got the value of 20 and here we can see we have got self dot x2 which is 190 and here you can see we got self dot y2 which is 75 and if you now turn your attention to the canvas this line here will actually draw between the point I've got marked with these X's and there is the line being drawn and of course those X's were only there for the purpose of this video so I'll remove them therefore we can see that this program statement was responsible for drawing this line because we have these values here being set with these two being set when we clicked on the mouse the first time and these two being set when we clicked on the mouse the second time and if you now come to this line you can see that we're changing this to zero because currently if you look at it you can see it's one so I'll now show that one changing to a zero as you can see there now why is that being done well the next time we decide as a user to click onto the canvas we will find ourselves coming back to execute this method will come to this line and will ask whether this variable is zero and we can clearly see it is so these are the program statements then to be executed and these two will alter appropriately and of course the next time we go through we will find ourselves executing these lines and these values will change and of course this line here will then draw between the two new coordinate positions that have been set by the user clicking on the left mouse button within the canvas before i go on let's just remind ourselves of the parameters that appear here and you can see we have self and event now the self i covered fully in the last video but just very briefly this gets the id for the object it is associated with this is the event that the draw line is going to receive which is this event here and because it receives this event it can gain access to these values here the x and the y coordinate so we've just shown that this program statement has executed now what's going to happen well we finish executing the draw line method and we will return to this main loop and of course once we return the events shown here in the animation is no longer required it's no longer effectively in existence the event is over with and it'll have gone out of scope so we get rid of it and we're now in this main loop here what's happening when we're in this main loop well this is the application and it's waiting for the user to click on the mouse button again and when it clicks on the mouse button again these two values will be altered and when it clicks on it again these two values will be altered and of course this line will then draw the line between 
the two new coordinate positions that were entered by the mouse click. Before I finish the description of this program, I'd like us to reflect on the objects that have been created here. You see, this created an object, the window object, as you can see. And this window object is an object that's capable of containing other objects. And what this line has done, it's created an instance of the class above. And that instance is the canvas shown here. And then, of course, we go into the main loop. But what we need to realize is what we have in terms of objects, the, the core of this, if you like, is the window is an object, the canvas is an object, and the event that I showed as a circular schematic diagram a moment ago with the X and Y in, that's an object. Now, I don't want to be too pedantic, but all of these here are objects as well. But we can go with this simplified view of them and regard them as variables or data fields or data attributes. Now this line has created the object which I haven't shown schematically, I've shown it here. It's this region within the window. And this region within the window which is the canvas is able to respond to clicking on the left mouse button because of this line here which is used a bind method to bind this and this represents the left mouse click within the code with this handler and this handler is this method here and remember we have to have the word self in that was covered in the previous video now you still may be thinking this is all well and good but this class seems a lot more complicated than the procedural way of writing code that was introduced in the video before the last one we looked at. Well, the next video I'm going to do is going to look at how having the class as shown here is very handy because it keeps together all of the functionality we need together with all the data we need, all the X and Y coordinate positions. And we can see how it is useful from the viewpoint of easily having more than one application. In other words, having more than one canvas into which we can draw various lines. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.